I live in, in Berkeley and, and I've been living there for 30 years and I know all the streets of how to get to my home and my work, but I still use Google Maps because at any point in time, you don't know the amount of traffic between where you are and where you want to go and which one of the many routes available to you has an accident or slowdown or too many other people are going on. The value of exterior mapping is, I think, why not? Pretty well understood by the, uh, by the public. Interiors, you can argue less about people getting lost and traffic and stuff like that, but imagine um, package delivery, like Amazon is going to deliver our packages through drones all the way to the exterior of our building, but then um, you wanted the last mile of delivering those same things in, into different offices or apartments inside the building, and that would also require mapping. So the idea is to make the interior mapping be seamlessly integrated with the exterior mapping so that you can have true end-to-end -end, uh, connectivity between two different points. All of us, uh, through, the, through this amazing device we carry with ourselves, cell phones, uh, are continuously collecting signals and images and data uh, about our surrounding. Uh, whether or not we know it and whether or not we like it, we're, we're doing that unconsciously all the time. It's through crowdsourcing, so it, if, if you get the aggregate of all the people who are going into all these indoor spaces, uh, you have the potential to map every, every indoor space. Uh, the, 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 the typical cell phone has over 40 sensors. There's uh, accelerometers, gyroscopes, barometers, thermometers, Wi-Fi signal, Bluetooth, all kinds of RF. Our uh, uh, signal gathering capability, and so I, I hate to say it, but a lot of it are being tracked because to use a lot of the applications on your phone, you allowed the company that sold you the phone to to collect that information, and that's almost synonymous with mapping. So those could be used in order to map the um, interiors. This very same people whose whose crowdsourced data you use to map, you can use that same information to locate people. When there is an emergency, either an earthquake, fire, or uh, anything like that, the first responders will have a lot easier time uh, knowing where people are and knowing how to rescue people and, and, and just having more information is always useful. The other positive thing uh, in terms of knowing where you are is that, and how many people are where and knowing the maps, is that is this idea of smart buildings. Um, you can control the many, many sensors and actuators that are inside the building to your liking. So suppose that I, I like the temperature in my office to be no, no warmer than 64, um, um, just, just because there's a map and because they, they know where I am. I, I, first, when I'm not in my office, there's not going to be any cold HVAC air being pumped into it. That saves energy. Uh, and when I'm with a day that I'm not working in my office, but working, you know, in the conference room across the hall from my office, um, the same temperature preferences can be applied to that room. Localizing people enables them to be more comfortable and more in tune with the environment that uh, that that they're in, and it could result in potential energy savings inside buildings uh, if, if that information is readily available. Mm -hmm.